Hi everyone, Stjepan here in the first Thursday's endgame video. I'm going to go over the, uh, one of the most basic endgame positions, which everybody should know, but sadly people mess it up. People often lose this position with the defending side, in this case, in this position on the diagram, it's black. And this has to be corrected. This is a position which you should know by heart, which you should know if somebody wakes you up at 3 a.m. and asks you how do you draw a Philidor position. Okay, let's get into it. So the Philidor position is also known as the Philidor defense, not the same as the Philidor defense against e4. Probably a better term would be Philidor's defense, and also known as the third rank defense. Now, uh, it's a defensive technique that helps you draw rook and pawn end games where you have no pawns and your opponent has one pawn. So if you are a pawn down in the rook end game, you're defending with just a rook, that position is still a draw with proper technique. And I'm going to show you how and why. Okay, uh, to start with, I've chosen the worst possible case for the defending side. So the defender's king is cut off uh, on the last rank or on the eighth rank. The attacker's rook is perfectly cutting the king off. So the king takes no part in the game. Uh, what white is going to do, white is of course going to advance his pawn up uh, and that's possible because the king can go around the pawn from both sides, therefore the black rook is unable to defend. So let's just continue the position until we reach the critical point. For example, rook g5, black does nothing, the pawn advances, black does nothing. And now this is the first point. Until the defenders, uh, until the attacker's pawn reaches the critical position, you as black or as the defender, don't have to do anything. You can just wait. Any sensible move is fine. One thing has to be noted though, you don't want to move your king away from the queening square. That doesn't mean that you should keep your king only on, A8, on E8, on the queening square. You need to keep it in the vicinity of the queening square and you need to be able to reach the queening square in one move. So whatever you do, don't move your king away, for example, to H8 or to G8. That would then be... Uh, Possibly a winning position for white. Not surely, but possibly. So the safest thing is keep your king on the queening square, wait, move your rook around, you don't have to do anything until the pawn reaches the critical square. So for example, rook b6, king d4, the king advances, you can check, you don't have to, e5, rook to g6, you still wait. And king to d5. Now we have reached the critical position. This is the Philidor defense or the Philidor position or the Philidor defensive technique or the third rank defense. It's the third rank defense because your rook cuts across the third or the sixth rank, uh, disabling the attacker's king from advancing forward. Therefore, it's impossible for white in this case to make any progress because he is unable to advance his king until his pawn advances to provide sh shelter. So if the pawn advances in this case to e6, then the king will have been sheltered and will be able to go to d6 without being interrupted. So, one thing that you have to note here. In this position, you still do nothing. You can play rook to b6, you can play rook to h6, you can play uh, king to f7, you can play king, uh, king to f8, you can play king to d8, doesn't matter. You just wait. And if that happens, white has no way of making progress. White can also just wait and you both basically do nothing until white decides to advance his pawn. So coming back to this position, at some point, white is going to have to do something. White is going to have to play the move e6. So for example, king d8, you wait. Rook h7, white waits. King e8, you wait. You don't step away from the queening square. Rook to a7, white does nothing. Rook to b6, black does nothing. And now finally, e6. And now what white is doing, white is prepared to do this, to get past the pawn, around the pawn, to the f6 square and then checkmate or promote and win the game. So this is the critical point. The Philidor defensive technique is, as soon as the pawn reaches the third or the sixth rank, you go behind, you go to the first rank and you check from behind. That's the defensive technique. So in this case, rook to b1. Rook to b2 is also okay, but always go as far as possible. Don't give the white king the option to chase you around and to catch your rook. So always go to the final rank, to the first rank. So rook to b1. And what's the point? If now king to d6 is played, trying to, well, checkmate in this case, uh, I'm sorry, rook to a8 would be checkmate, uh, you now check from behind, rook to d1 check. King e5, he tries to go around to the other side, rook to e1 check. King to d6 again, rook to d1 check. And the position basically 
is repeated until white accepts a draw. There's nothing he can do. If he tries to go towards your, your rook, he doesn't have time to do that. Rook g1 check, you can just check. If he goes back, then you repeat, you check. King to f3, now you simply go rook to e1 and you win. The thing is, as soon as he checks you, you advance up the board with your king, if he does that, you advance up the board with your king and you are easily going to be able to round this pawn up. So let's repeat what's going on. Until we reach this critical position, when the pawn is on the fourth rank for the defensive side, on the fifth rank for the attacking side, uh, we do nothing. When this happens, you have to be prepared to meet the move e6, the only advance white could go for, with, in this case, if black does nothing, if white plays e6, what do you do? You go rook h1, so that you can meet king to d6, or king to e5, or king to f6 eventually, or even king to c6, with rook check from behind. That's the field or defensive technique. Let's go over one other position. This is a slightly different example. The same technique applies, nothing, nothing is different. Uh, the defender's side is, of course, better off here because the king is not cut off. So the attacking side, of course, cuts the king off, rook to b6. King to f7, and now we continue. King to e5. Black doesn't have to do anything. As I said, black can just move the rook around do whatever he wants, wait around, there's no pressure, e4. Let's reach the critical position. The king is cut off, black doesn't mind that, because he knows the field of defensive technique. King to, uh, I'm sorry, rook to a1, king to e6. Rook check, king d5, rook b6, black does nothing, e5, we have reached the critical position. Rook b5, for example, king to e6, rook b6, you can also do that, king to f5. Rook a6, you wait. As soon as which move happens, you need to go back as soon as e6 happens. So e6, and we go back. Rook to a1. If the king advances, we check it from behind. If, for example, he checks us, we simply, simply play king to e7. There is no progress to be made. If he checks again, we just go back. There is no progress. As soon as the king steps forward to help, rook f1 check, and the game is a draw. So make sure that in your own games you recognize the Philidor defensive technique and that you recognize the position. One thing I would like to highlight is a technique I've learned from Jonathan Rosen. Uh, I'm sorry, from Jonathan Hawkins. Sorry, I mix them uh, often. often. Uh, it, from his book Amateur to IM, which is, by the way, an excellent book. You should read it if you can. It is, it is a technique of reducing the endgame to known elements. So if, for example, we imagine a position in which we have a 3 to 2 rook endgame. So let me let me set something up. Okay, uh, board editor, I'm just going to quickly set something up so that you can see what I'm talking about. So for example, this. Let's put the king here. No, that's stupid. King here, king here, rook here, rook here analysis board. Okay, for example, we have this. So as black, uh, trying to reduce the endgame to known elements, in this case, the known element is the Philidor position, you know that if you manage to trade off two of those pawns, it's going to be a draw. You know that. Therefore, in tournament chess, uh, top players are going to sometimes agree to a draw in this position. Very often, uh, if they play it out, it is going to be a draw. Of course, both sides can mess it up. If black doesn't know the field or position, he can, uh, he can lose the game. Let me just show you one more example. I'm sorry, I've gone out of the studies, uh, so I'm going to set it up again. Board editor, excuse me. So what happens when white has a flank pawn? We are going to look at that as well. Or better to say, when the defensive, uh, when the attacking side has the flank pawn. In this case, the Philidor position uh, doesn't apply because it's an automatic draw. There is just no way to win this. Even though the king is uh, cut off, there is no way for white to make progress. Why is that? Because the king cannot go around the pawn in both directions. So if the king starts marching up, black can just check it and then check it endlessly and then win the pawn. The king is unable to go around the pawn from both sides as if uh, the position is when the pawn is, for example, on d3, e3, e4, wherever else on the board. On rook files, the Philidor uh, defensive technique is unnecessary. You can just draw easily. Okay, uh, thank you for watching. I know this is pretty basic, but I'm going to go through basic rook and pawn end games in the next, uh, I would say, 20 weeks. Because rook and pawn end games are those that occur most often in tournament games. 
And the Philidor position is one of the most basic, basic positions you have to know. Uh, let me know if you knew this before. Let me know if this helped. Uh, and stay tuned for more chess. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.